Hello everyone, and welcome back to Beyond Blue, where we have just stumbled upon something very special indeed. Do you see what the dolphins are doing here? Rubbing up against the coral? That may look like they're just playing or having fun, but very, very specific species of coral can actually help these dolphins out by giving them a special substance to help them get rid of parasites or to even heal wounds. And I think we're about to discover one of those species. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Hello. All right, can I send off? There's the drone. Oh, wow, look at you, friend. Hi. I have colleagues that are studying the antimicrobial properties of these coral. That's so cool. So it's just like we were saying. The antimicrobial properties of the coral means that this coral may actually offer some healing properties to be able to get rid of bacteria in the cuts and scrapes and just little cracks that do happen to show up in the dolphin's skin as they fight and feed and just live out in the open. So it's kind of like if we used soap or if we used hand sanitizer to try to heal up all of the little cuts that we might get on our hands in order to stay safer. And that is amazing. Think about that. How did the dolphins realize if I rub up against this piece of coral, the cuts will actually heal better? Just trying to wrap my head around that, it's one of the amazing mysteries of the world to me. I'd love to learn more. All right, can we scan more? We can. Hello, friend. So you're also coming over, and you too, for a little bit of the coral. And then we're gonna swim down here and collect a sample. Oh, hi! <laughs> really? Mm, don't even care what I'm up to, do you? That's so cool. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys, this is just too special. I love it. Oh, I think we have another dolphin coming to join us. Hello, hello. Yes, okay, let me swim up a little. I want to get a good look at this again. But this is very much kind of like a dolphin wellness clinic that you see. And it's another reason that the coral is so important. It might seem like a static rock, but it actually ends up being home, food, even unexpectedly medicine for the different creatures of the sea. Just like what I've been talking about, comparing the open ocean to the forest. There are many plants and other things that different animals will eat, even though they don't have a concept of science or a concept of why certain things hurt their stomachs and other things don't. There are plants out there that the animals will eat to try to relieve pain, to try to line their nest actually that's a very common thing in birds to line the nest that they have with certain plant species that allow them to have less parasites in the nest and thus a better chance of their babies being able to survive hey andre those reef sharks like your ringtone hi guys will i be able to get the data off that sensor while i'm picking it up no it goes to sleep when the power is low to preserve the data all right, so we've got Andre's missing piece. And what is that? Oh! <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> Did you see that? Shame that wasn't on the live stream. Have you seen one do that before? Never! That's so cool! Octopus. I'm picking up a tag from the sperm well pod. Pushing the waypoint now. Oh, on my so way! Fun. But Octopus will actually go ahead and they Sorry, will- Sorry, sharks. Hi. Mirai is off the menu. <laughs> Maybe if I change colors, they'll, they'll be like, whoa, what is that bioluminescent thing? But the octopus will often gather up the shells to use as defense or tools or homes, which I think is just absolutely amazing. Oh, whoa, what is this? <gasps> is that the family? Did the whale shark, or the not the whale shark, did, did the sperm whales finally find their family? The baby's back with the rest of the pod. What's it doing? Nuzzling, probably calling for its mama. Oh. Are you calling for your mother? Ah! Uh, don't say it like that. Mariah, that just makes me feel... That makes me feel so, like, ah, uh, sad for the baby. But look at this. 
It is calling. Okay. Ah, oh, it's so hard. Okay, up, 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 and out a little bit. Got it. Andrea's first recorded vocalization. And nuzzling. Why would whales nuzzle? Can you imagine how special touch might be in the ocean? Ugh. Do they touch to be able to stay warm, to stay with each other? How do, do, do they take care of each other the way that like lion prides do? With the aunties and grandmas and cousins all contributing to taking care of the babies? so cool. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, I hear it. It's that weird noise again. There they go. That was our shot. The thing is, sound is one of the ways that these guys... Can you send the sub to pick me up? I'm done for now. Since where they are in the water. You'll end up with a lot of different species of whale that will actually beach themselves because of the noise and the sound of the different boats, especially the submersibles um, and some of the bigger ships uh, with those gigantic propellers. The sheer noise they make throws off some of the important ways that many creatures will navigate through the water and as a result they can't find their food. It'd be like going blind, basically. A lot of the creatures of the ocean don't rely on their eyesight as much as they rely on echolocation. And echolocation relies on kind of like a clean soundscape to be able to go through the water. You throw a noisy boat into that mix, and you've just blinded a creature that won't be able to find its food. It might end up beaching itself. It might end up wandering into the grasp of a predator without realizing it. It's especially a huge problem for whales who rely on that clicking and that conversation to be able to triangulate where they are and how to move together. Imagine how easy it would be to get lost if you suddenly went deaf and blind in the open ocean trying to find the rest of your pod. It's a big problem. <sighs> I figured that if you could introduce whale songs into popular culture, you could maybe get a movement going to save the whales. Roger Payne creator of Songs of the Humpback Whale album and founder, Ocean Alliance. Hmm. That was a lot to, like, go through. I, I really want to know more about, like, what we're working with. And I really want to be able to know more about, like, behavior. How can I learn more about the behaviors of the animals? Available on the sub, but I haven't been able to figure out, like, where that is just yet. Oh, maybe this thing? Whoa! Alright! Wow! So, if I go ahead and select this... <gasps> this is so cool! Oh, wow! So you can go ahead and turn the 3D model around. Look at the whale shark going nearby. That's so fun! We could view the science log. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead. No, no, I want to view the science log. All right, science log. Tag retrieval, lineage, whale birth confirmed. Okay, we knew all of that, so behavior. Oh, fun! So we could actually see like when they're doing their different behaviors. Rolling? Wow! Keep in mind, guys, again, this is all based on the actual movement that the real life creatures do. And that's the rolling, which from what I was reading, it's suspected they do that to turn their melon, which is the front part of their skull. Or it's kind of on the humpback whales, it's kind of like the fatty tissue up along above their eyes, on top of their, their body. But they turn so they can use that melon to echolocate and to click and to figure out where, what's going on below them. And below them, uh, is the open ocean down deep where their prey, the sperm, or not the sperm whales, excuse me, the sperm whales prey are the giant squid and other squid species. So when they flip like that, they're not just like playing in the water, they're trying to kind of sound down and find where their food might be down, which I think is amazing. What does it look like? Oh, you've got that baby nursing! Oh, that's so freaking special! 
Also, I never noticed this about whale sharks before, but apparently the babies have teeth and the whale sharks have holes in their upper mouth lined up with where their teeth go. I have never noticed that before. What other creatures do that? I said whale sharks and I meant sperm whales. Wow. Why? Do other creatures do that? Just have one jaw of teeth and then the rest of it is just places for the teeth to go? I'm learning so much more by being able to do all this. This is amazing. And apparently I have something about the giant clam. <laughs> oh, what is the behavior of the giant clam? I think this is it. This is all the behavior we've got. And we've got a little bit of info about the giant clam. Well, that's fun. All right, that's really cool. All right, so, oh, what's this? Is that new? Mindful care. Oh, a hands-off guide approach to caregiving. So we're trying to figure out how to take good care of our Nana. And it looks like we've been flipping through the paperwork on oh, the clinical trials paper for agitation in Alzheimer's. <sighs> That's bringing back a lot of memories. Whale song data. I mean, we're doing important research down here too. It's like I said, sometimes you can't fix something that's way outside of your hands. But in a weird way, I feel like going on these big life adventures... Sometimes it's not about how long you have or, or how perfect it is. But it's about how much you're really out there for the adventure while you've got the chance. Let's go ahead and call Ren. Hey, it's Ren! Leave a message at the beep. Is there actually a beep? Hey, Ren, why's your phone off? You said this was a good time to call. Ignore that. Someone was messing with my whales today. I was just hoping I could vent to you a little. Mm, hope your test went well. Updates on Nana. You know what? Let's go ahead. If there's updates, she'll let us know. And it's important to remember, like I said, the fullness of life. I hope your test went well. Hey, we had a whale of Palooza today. Anyway, give me a call when you can. The whales say hi back. All right, so Ren's not available, but what's going on over here? And also, apparently there's coral in this region that's going through a stress response. And that's not good. The coral is kind of like the canary in the coal mine easily for what the health of the surrounding ocean is. So maybe we'll get to the bottom of that. Hey, Mirai. How are you? <sighs> Doing all right. How are you feeling? Any better? A bit. I might finally be getting my sea legs. Next step, diving. <laughs> One step at a time, Mirai. <laughs> okay, but I promise you, it'll change your life. Is Andre with you? No, just me. Andre is analyzing some sound files in the other lab. I think I may have upset him. Touchy group. Again? Maybe it wasn't you. You upset him? Or that noise upset him? Because it certainly upset me. He was overreacting, and I pointed it out. I was not overreacting. Oh, hello. Andre, I didn't realize you were on. What did you find? This is video and audio from your last dive. And this is an analysis of the sound that spooked the family. And this sound is from the Canadian Marine Acoustic Scientist. I think the findings are pretty clear. The signatures sound the same to me. He gave me the same test. Andre, who is messing with my whales? Deep sea miners. Here? In the research zone? It's off limits to commercial activity. And when has that ever mattered before? We don't know that they're in the research zone. They may be just outside it. We knew they were doing an impact study nearby. What are they after? That might give us a clue. They're looking for rare minerals to make solar panels. Could the sound cause trauma to the whales? The acoustic specialist said it might push them to quieter hunting grounds, but was unlikely to cause acoustic trauma. So what's the wow, matter? There's acoustic we should use specialist? our mapping drone to investigate their activity. And this is where our debate turns into an argument. We need their drone to map the deep sea vents before Mirai dives there. The biochemistry of these vents is the perfect cocktail for creating new life forms. If there is illegal activity there, we have to stop it. Otherwise, there will be no life forms. 
Why spend our short time here policing rather than researching? Let's be scientists. Mirai, your dive, your call. Yeah. Uh. I mean, the thing is, when you do deep sea mining and when you do deep sea trawling, the trauma that you can cause will take literally centuries for these atolls and these coral reefs to recover. It, it destroys, it's basically, when you do deep sea trawling, imagine going, like I said, to a forest and just leveling everything that's there. And imagine that the trees there grow at the rate of two to three to four hundred years before they'll come back. So I think I want to investigate the miners. I'll dive in the vents without a map. Nobody messes with my whales. Oh boy. And a message from our sister? Hey, Mirai. Sorry I missed you. Misplaced my phone. Whale of Palooza? Is that a real thing? Tell whomever annoyed you I'm coming for them. Hey, nobody messes with our whales. Does your submarine have sonar? Maybe you can find the bad guys with that. Maybe that was the answer they were looking for on my test. I was hoping to chat live too. You need to help me figure out a better plan for next semester. Miss you. <laughs> I love how this is just like a real life phone call with my sister where suddenly like her voice is coming from super far away because she just put her phone down and walked away and kept talking. <laughs> uh, but all right. So guys, there is another dive ready and there appears to be some issues. It's pretty clear what my stance on deep sea trawling and deep sea diving is. They're such delicate, delicate ecosystems and mm, people really, it's hard to regulate. What do you say about the open ocean? Who should be in charge? Like, what should we take? What should we give, if anything? There's no perfect answers, but I think there's definitely a stance you can take. And I think that it's always better to play it safe rather than be sorry. We're like children, very young children playing finely in the depths of the ocean. And I think it's better to move safely than to barrel in here and destroy something before we even understand what's going on. Like the biochemistry of the deep sea vents, that could be where life started. Life on our whole planet started from those kinds of places most likely and just imagine not understanding the biochemistry of that knocking over something that just looks like some sort of mud pile with hot water spewing out of it and failing to recognize that the chemistry of that area was creating the building blocks for new life children playing in the open ocean we should move responsibly let's take out these guys and let's go see what they're up to but <laughs> Hello, friend! I'm never gonna get over just like having- it's like having the birds fly outside my window, except they're fish. I'm not nearly as scared of the ocean and all of this view, now that I'm just thinking about it in terms of it being basically like a forest. It's a forest that will drown me, but it's a forest. <laughs> but alright guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like for all of our amazing, amazing fish around here. And of course, that wonderful whale family and their little pod. And if you'd like to join me on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.